Hey folks, this is Todd Coburn, Cal Poly Pomona. This is a little video to help you get familiar with my syllabus and my grading expectations. They're a little more detailed and a little different than you probably have been exposed to if you haven't been in one of my classes. The first key to succeeding in my classes is to understand our content. You're going to find out my syllabus is quite detailed and gives you all the information you need to know. Let's take a look at how that works. First, let's take a look at the syllabus. If you look here, you'll see this is my syllabus for Arrow 3261. You'll notice all the class information is up here at the top. And then we have a listing of topics. This is for summer session 2021. Now summer session's a little faster, so this is a slightly different layout than we'll normally see. You're gonna see each week here to the left, you're gonna see what the date, uh, the pertinent date is, and then you're gonna see the topics covered. So our first class is gonna cover two topics. Uh, normally those would be each class during a normal fall, spring semester. These are the chapters in the Aerospace Strength Handbook, volume one you're gonna do. And the homework is due on June 7th by close of business. In industry, close of business means when the business closes, which typically could be four or five o'clock. However, the way this is understood often is any time during the day they can argue that actually we're still working. And so a lot of times that's taken to be midnight, 12 midnight. So in our class, whenever I see something is due by close of business, that means before midnight. Now, if it's like arrives at midnight, it's actually late. It needs to be before midnight, okay? So this is going to be due on June 7th. The first two homeworks, homework one and two, will be due on June 7th. Homework three, four, and five will be due on June 14th, and so on. You're going to see here quizzes and testing when those occur. The quizzes, every single Wednesday, we're going to have either a test or a quiz. Now, this is a virtual asynchronous class. It's actually called bisynchronous because we have synchronous components and and non-synchronous, asynchronous. So our first quiz will be the second week on Wednesday. You'll come in to uh, go to our uh, website. You will pull up the quiz. You will work the quiz and you will submit it. And it will be open during class time. Now it might not be open the full class time. It depends on how much time I give. So I will give you a test window or a quiz window that's open for the entire uh, class period but you will only receive the entire class period if you need that much time. If I make a little 10 minute quiz, you're gonna have 10 minutes. And so you can log in anytime during class time to take it, but you will need 10 minutes. Since these could vary in length, I recommend doing that at the very start of class every time so you get done and have ample time, you don't time out. If you time out, I'm gonna penalize you rather heavily because you're gonna have more than enough time in that window to get this done. So if you wait till the very last minute and run out of time, that's gonna be on you, okay? Part of managing your work and your responsibility. So uh, we're gonna have a quiz or a test every Wednesday. So our first quiz will be the first Wednesday. Our first test will be the second Wednesday. We're actually in week three and so on. So every single Wednesday, expect to log in to our Canvas or Blackboard site, pull up the quiz, or test and to work that. Okay, uh, that's everything we're gonna be doing. You're gonna see the entire class here. Now, if there's any changes, I will communicate those on Blackboard or Canvas, whichever we're using. Here's our grading scale. And then you're gonna to wanna to be read carefully. We have our textbook information here. I highly recommend getting one or more of these supplemental textbooks. And then detailed class expectations of how the class is going to be working and uh, what I expect from you. Let's take a look at some of the other class expectations. You're going to notice here that our class is operated by either Blackboard or Canvas, and everything is going to be communicated there. I'm going to be often making updates to the class, improvements to the class, and it's all going to show up there first. Okay, it's going to tell you uh, I, there's going to be no required attendance except for the very first class. However, you're really good. Most students are going to need the time in office, uh, our office session, when we are talking about problems. It's going to really help you 
to uh, do better. So you're going to watch the videos on your own. This says how the homework is going to be done and what my expectations are. This reminds us how quizzes are being done. When you do ORCA quiz, you're going to put your answers into Blackboard, but you're not going to show any of your work. You should be working on your own paper, having a justification for every problem, but you're not going to submit that to me. You're just going to record your answer in Blackboard. Now with tests, you're going to be doing something similar and different. You're going to be recording, working your problems in a stepwise fashion, just like on the homework. And you're going to be putting your answers in Blackboard. However, at the end of the test, you're going to get an additional 15 minutes to scan all of your handwork and to submit it to me. That work needs to be in order. That means problem one, problem two, problem three, and so on. Not problem one, five, three, or something like that. Also, since if this is an online class, then you're going to be allowed to use whatever tools are at hand as long as you develop those tools and you haven't borrowed them or shared them with somebody. Um, that includes Excel programs, you write whatever. However, if you use Excel programs, MATLAB or whatever, um, you're going to need to submit that in your scan for those tests. And once again, that needs to be organized neatly and in order. If it's out of order, you will be penalized potentially heavily. So if you work in Excel for problem one, you do some handwork and you have an Excel that should be shown the handwork and the Excel or vice versa. And then you go on to problem two and then on to problem three. The Excel for problem one should not occur down at the bottom of the homework or after other problems. If it does, you're going to be penalized for how that being out of order. Office hours. So office hours are going to be online over the summer. And I'm going to highly encourage you to do that. If you don't show up to office hours, you're going to have probably questions. If you have questions, you're going to likely email them to me. Uh, I am not here to answer 100 individual exactly the same questions through email. If you have a technical question, come to his office and raise your question there. Everybody can benefit from that question. Okay. If you have a question about the class, some other outside thing, you can email me about that. Um, but any technical questions really need to come to office hours. So make sure you use office hours first and foremost. This communications about the class section is telling us how communication will occur in the class. Each email, if you do send me an email about the class, once again, technical content will only be handled during office hours. Uh, if you have any email communications, make sure to put the name of the class, arrow 3261 section whatever, in the subject line. Try to keep your email to one topic at a time. This allows me to answer them more quickly. If I have any part of an email that I need to go do more research before I answer, then I typically won't answer the whole email until I go and deal with those things. That's going to give you a later response. If it's simple, concise, and I have a quick answer for you, I can fire that right back if you keep your content to like one topic at a time. Okay, Don't, uh, this talks about my other expectations, academic and uh, integrity, and then talks about my test expectations, how your test needs to be prepared. We talked about that a little before, how it needs to be in, in order. You're gonna get points for the problems that you solve and give the answers on Blackboard. That's where the majority of points are going to be. And then you're going to also get points for your uploaded scan. Your uploaded scan is typically only worth about 10 points. And if you have a clear, neat, sequential scan, then you'll receive full points for that part. If you don't upload a scan, then uh, I require a scan for every test. That means your other problems, the answers that you put into Blackboard, have no support. If those problems have no support, then I will not score them full credit. The max score you will get if you don't upload your scan will be 50% for a correct answer and zero for an incorrect answer. So you're required to upload your scan. Another thing about your scan, if your scan is sloppy, hard to read, too faint to read, or uh, misorganized, then you're going to lose points for that. Probably if you have very many deficiencies with your scan work, you will receive zero points for your scan. You can still, I'll still use that to support your other work as long as I can understand what it's saying, but you'll probably score zero. If you want to get full credit, make sure your work is neat. It includes all steps to solve the problems. This could include an Excel uh, file. 
that's clear. If you do use Excel, that Excel needs to be clear. That's how that works. Read this carefully. And this talks about how what those detailed expectations are. Okay, and then grading. So you're going to grade all your own homework in my class. You're going to grade it before you turn it in. You do get credit for your homework, but you're going to grade it first. Since all my homeworks have the answers provided at the bottom, I have a detailed procedure for how you're going to grade your problem. And that's outlined here. You're going to need to read that carefully. It'll take you a little bit of time the first time you grade your homework. After that, it'll be a lot easier. Okay. Basically, in summary, you're going to get five up to five points per problem, typically. And then you're going to sum those up and tell me what the total score is. And if in a specific way where you're giving me the number of points you're claiming over the number of points possible. And that needs to be circled. It needs to be a different color ink uh, or pencil than what your other work is so I can understand it. Once again, if your homework is not clear, uh, it's going to be penalized. If you uh, now that the intent of this is not to cause a lot of anxiety. So if you think you scored it correctly, <clears throat> I want you to use your judgment and score it uh, the way you think it's correct. However, if I feel like you are mm, not being ethical in reporting accurately what score you have, then I will penalize you probably zeroing out that assignment. So you want to make sure that you're very clear and you follow the prescribed procedure. Now, once again, I said I didn't want you to cause you anxiety. So if you feel like, ah, I think it's right, I think it's good enough, I think Coburn has an error, or I think there's just a bigger tolerance than what he's allowing for, that's fine. What I want you to do is give yourself the benefit of the doubt and claim credit, but then put a little note right there where you claim, say, hey, I think this is close enough for whatever reason. And then on the front page where you score your homework, you're going to put a little note, C problem five, or whatever problem that is where you have that note. Anytime you vary from the prescribed grading procedure. I just expect you to put a note right there where you're varying and a note on the front page where you're scoring it. So it's easy for me to see. If it's easy for me to see, I will not penalize you. Now, I may take away the points if I disagree with your logic, but uh, but as long as you're honest and open with that, I will not penalize you any points for having made a judgment call, as long as you're clear and open about it. This is the syllabus for 3271. 3271 syllabus is laid down the same way as 3261 syllabus. And all the things that I said about 3261 applies here. So this is just showing you the way 3271 is organized and all the same applies for the rest of the syllabus down below. So let's take a look at the grading procedure. This is a typical homework. This student scored himself 40 out of 40 points. You'll notice that he has, you follow the grading procedure, he's showing as he goes through his homework, he says, well, I've got all the pieces, I've got plus five for this problem. Then you go on to the next one and he's got another plus five and so on. He totals it up in a different coloring, attempted over possible, circles it and he's done. I typically will uh, deduce points if you don't follow the instructions, which means if you don't score your homework, then I'm not gonna score it either. I will usually just reject it and score you a zero. Here's another example. This student for this homework, 35 out of 35. Same story. He's got each one identified how many points. This is another student. Look how beautiful this work is, 34 out of 35. And you'll notice she followed a more detailed procedure. First, she copied my homework, and then she's got plus one for this piece, plus two for this piece. So she's scoring herself for each piece of the problem before she scores it up. That may be easier for you. And then she's showing her total score here. Another problem here, this is a little more sloppy. This is on the low end of the neatness scale, in my opinion. However, the student got full credit because he shows he's got 30 out of 30. This is showing how extra credit should be shown, plus two. It's not included to the score here. If I tell you, now normally in Z office sessions when I give extra credit, I usually record it directly. But if I ever tell you to record your uh when we're in class, face-to-face -face classes, I give out a lot of extra credit. And when that happens, students have to claim that for it to get the credit. And then this is the way, appropriate way to show it. They'll score their homework the same way as always. And they'll say plus two. And what he should have said is XC, showing me this extra credit. Also, he uh, he's giving me a little note here. Now, let's say he wanted me to look at a certain problem. He could have put a little note just like this and say, look at problem five or whatever. Okay. And then here's one more example. Once again, scoring full credit showing detailed point-by-point -point scoring. 
and look at how neat this work is where this student is giving me all the details in quite a neat fashion, okay? Those are some examples of some scored homeworks. Now, let's take a look at any time. So in a face-to-face -face class, often we're turning in one homework assignment at a time. Whenever we collect more than one homework at a time, and you're gonna notice a number of most of the places in this class, we're gonna be collecting one uh, more than one assignment at a time, you're gonna need a cover sheet. The syllabus talks about this too. Let's take a look at a graded cover sheet. So you'll also notice in my syllabus, whenever we collect more than one homework at a time, whenever we have one homework at a time and you can grade it just like we just saw right there on the first sheet of the homework. However, if there's more than one homework, like homework one and two, or in this case, homework 14 through 16, then you're gonna need to attach a cover sheet on the front. The cover sheet should have your name as shown here. It should have the class number shown here. It should have what this is, and this is a homework collection. This particular one is homework 14 through 16. You'll notice we have homework 14, 15, and 16 shown. For each one, we show the points score divided by the points possible. We also have any special notes, like in homework 15, uh, this student was awarded five extra credit points, so they say plus five extra XC. You'll notice they didn't add to their homework score because it's not part of their homework score, it's extra credit, okay? And uh, like, let's say I make a mistake on a homework answer. I tell you guys, hey, if you uh, if you solve this problem and you got confused because of the mistake, then score yourself an extra five points. This would be the way you would claim those points, not by adding it to your homework score, by having to decide. Also, let's say that you had a question about a homework problem, maybe you gave yourself credit, you didn't understand it. You can put a little note like this, please see, prob see problem five, something like that, okay? Now, the one thing that this homework is lacking is we also need to see a totaled score where it's gonna show, okay, this is, we have 30, 40, 50, 60 points divided by 70 points and circled. So we're gonna to need to see the points scored over the points possible and circled in a different color ink. If you don't have the total score, then I'm gonna send that homework back and I'm gonna penalize you. This is all laid out in the syllabus and I expect you to follow those directions. Now, while it's true that it could be argued that scoring your homework pro properly or following directions in class has nothing to do with the technical content of the class, but this class teaches more than technical content. It's teaching you how to be a good engineer. It's teaching you how to say, take responsibility for your work. You're gonna find that a lot of engineering is simply following the prescribed process and directions. That's some of the easiest parts, but requires an attention to detail. And this is one of those things that's gonna capture how you do that and whether you do that correctly. So that's how, and then you put this on front of your other homework and you attach it together or have it in the scan just like that. Those were some ideas. That's uh, my syllabus. Now this little video is not intended to replace my syllabus. You're expected to read it in detail. You're gonna find a lot more information there. I recommend you take that first page, you make a copy of that, print it out and post it somewhere handy by your computer so you can refer to it frequently. It tells everything we're gonna do in the class. Read that carefully. Allow this video to maybe help you in the places you don't understand and then come to this office and ask questions if you don't understand. Looking forward to a rewarding semester where uh, hopefully you achieve and become all that you can be. Enjoy.